We're looking at the portrait and human facial proportions. This is a Peter Paul Rubens here, circa 1620. It's a pen and ink drawing with some ink washes. In particular, Rubens is observing the head positions. At the top, we have a three-quarter angle of the head. At the bottom right corner, we see a head position that's facing downward. He's really paying attention to the details on the features, the individual characteristics of the nose, eyes, hair, and in particular, the head positioning. Next, we're looking at symbolism versus observational drawing. When we look at a portrait, and specifically drawing a portrait, we often see things in symbols. For example, the eyes appear as a football shape symbolically. And the nose may be an L shape, maybe exaggerated nostrils. And the mouth may be a full kissy mouth, or maybe a line. But we want to be looking at the portrait in an observational manner, meaning that we are looking at the individual characteristics of form. For example, the nuances of an individual eye. Maybe there are linear edges. Maybe there are values butted up against other values. But we don't see a definitive line like we would see on those L-shaped noses up at the top. We see that values butt up against other values, that there are intermediate values to show the physicality of the nose protruding forward. Likewise on the lips. The only definitive line is the crease between the two lip forms. Otherwise, there are shifts in values to show the edges. We're looking at da Vinci's exploration of human facial proportions, circa 1470s. We're looking at how he's analyzing the placement of the individual forms. For example, the eyes are in the middle of the head, the positioning of the nose that lies halfway between the nose and the bottom of the chin and the mouth lying between the nose and the top of the chin. Are we seeing that there? So he's really kind of breaking down the head into these individual shapes so he can figure out placement of form. We're looking at the standard human facial proportions here, and I want to kind of break down what we're looking at. For example, I want us to look at that the eyes are in the middle of the head that it's halfway between the top of the head and the chin, and that the nose is situated halfway between the eyes and the chin. And if we can look at this even more, is that the nose lies about halfway between where the chin top is and the bottom of the nose. That's where the mouth lies. The next thing we want to think about is where the nose is positioned on the head. For example, we often see students making the nose too small. We often use the tear duct as a placement of where the edge of that nose is aligned to. Now, everybody's nose is different, so some people's noses will be a little bit wider. They might be a little bit smaller, but it's a good tool for us to kind of take our pencil, align it from the edge of our nose to the inside of our tear duct, just for us to get an idea of the placement of where these individuals' features will be on the face. Next, I want us to look at the eyes. We can look at the eyes as a unit of measurement. There's usually about an eye's width of length in between the two eyes. Are you guys seeing that? So we can use the eye as a unit of measurement. And usually the eye width is almost very similar as the width of the nose. Now the last thing I kind of want us to use as an alignment is the pupil. The pupil reaches down to the edge of the crease of the mouth. Let's look at that. The pupil reaches down to the edge of the crease of the mouth. It's important when we're analyzing the face that we think about all of the individual features. For example, where the brow line is. The brow line is situated a little bit above the eyes, and that's where our ear will be aligned at the top or about. And the bottom of the nose will be where the bottom of the ear is aligned as well. Next, we're going to look at the positioning of the head. It's important for us to understand the way the head is positioned. For example, we're looking at a three-quarters angle here. 
Now, for example, all those ideal measurements might change. Again, when we see a nose kind of coming out or protruding, you might draw those angles as they are protruding. And likewise, if we see the head in a sphere shape, we might draw that sphere-like shape to show the general roundness of the head. Also, it's important for us to understand the positioning of the head. For example, if we're looking up or we're looking at a person that we're drawing, looking upward, it might change the way we see things. We might see more under the chin or more under the nose. Likewise, if the head is looking upward. Now, if it's looking downward, we might see more of the forehead and less of the, the underside of the nose. It's important for us to kind of pay attention to these general shapes. For example, if you guys decide to do a portrait of somebody's head facing downward, start looking at these general sphere-like shapes at the top and how the jaw might protrude at the bottom. We're looking at Albert Durer here. Around 1484, he was around 13 years old and he did this portrait of himself. He would carry this portrait around rolled up so he could show off to potential clients that he would be working for. So he would very much use this as a tool to show how good of a drafts person he is. This was a drawing he did when he was 15, a self-portrait. So we can see the progression. He's using ink, looking at the individual characteristics of the shape of the human head. Um, and as he got older, this was done in the 1500s, around 1505. And this is a portrait, and we can really see that he's broken down the features and really paying attention to the alignment of forms on the head and paying attention to the individual characteristics of each individual feature on the face. We're looking at Hans Holbein on the left. We talked a little bit about Hans Holbein in contour drawing, and we can see that he did a contour drawing of this portrait, again, a three-quarter angle portrait, but we can see how he's building in marks to show value very much paying attention to the individual characteristics of each form and feature on the face. Kata Kalowitz on the right. We can see that she's using expressive mark making to show value, but she's also really paying attention to the distance between forms, to the distance between features, how these things may align. For example, the eyes, how they align, the tear duct aligns to the nose how the mouth might align to those pupils like we were talking about before. These are wonderful examples of charcoal drawings on paper. You can see the left one, but the pigmentation of the skin might affect the values placed on the portrait. Again, paying attention to the alignment of features on the face, where the inside tear duct might align with the nose, where the pupils might align with the mouth, where the nose might align with the ears and the eyebrows at the top of the ears. And a wonderful example of looking at form without using line. These are very much value studies. There is some line or evidence of line left behind from the original drawing, but really focusing on value, that these values are butted up against other values, and really paying attention to the form of the hair, the individual gathers, and there's actual shape and form to hair, that they aren't individual strands, that they are positioned in individual gathers. These are student examples. On the left, we see the student using vigorous mark making to use value. Wonderful observations of the positioning of features. Look at those pupils coming down to the general area of the exterior of the mouth and the tear duct coming down to the exterior of the nose, that the brow line meets the top of the ear. And the bottom of the nose meets the bottom of the ear. And this one's a lot softer in value, but again, looking at those individual characteristics and how they are aligned. These are two more student examples. Again, really observing the individuality of the forms, very observational, not stereotyping forms, no football eyes, no L-shaped noses, really looking at every single value and really focusing where values butt up against other values instead of using line 